I'm very skeptical of personalized nutrition. Um, the accelerated commercialization of it is way out over its skis relative to the evidence and the veracity of that evidence. Um, and and I and I think that's probably why there's such a rush to commercialize it. Personalized nutrition is is a huge in area of interest mm-hmm. in research at the moment. What's your take on firstly how seismic a, a truly personalized approach to nutrition would be, not only for obesity and weight management, but also the long term health and well being of, of an individual? And just how realistic are some of the breakthroughs that are being touted close to being adopted by the general population? Yeah, so so I don't think there's anything seismic about personalized nutrition at all. I think it's a real example of where we have this tendency in our contemporary culture to be seduced by technology. And we assume that anything that's based in technology or represents an advancement related to technology is inherently better than than anything that's come before it um and i think personalized nutrition is also an example of what happens when science becomes commercialized to and 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 in that sense is is compromised by the commercialization of of what the research says when you actually look at the big trials that support much of the claims around personalized nutrition and if you were to come to them having seen the commercial side of it you know and the the big claims made and this is everyone will get their own individualized diet and then we'll solve and you actually look then at the research and realize how underwhelming it actually is um in most of the research the personalized nutrition algorithm produces advice that's really no better than a dietitian sitting down with someone and going over their own diet um the argument back to that would be that well you know a dietitian only gets to someone when they're already uh you know experiencing a decline in their in their health and needs to make changes whereas you know personalized nutrition can be predictive um i I don't necessarily buy that um because it's going to only ever reflect the population you take your data from to build your algorithm with so if you're taking data from individuals with pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes then your algorithm is going to produce recommendations specific to that population if you take you know uh, a broadly healthy population and 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 come up with it you know the idea that the advice so to speak produced from that would be identical to the uh you know the 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 population with some degree of metabolic impairment um you know it would be different likely so you look at the actual magnitude of changes as well one of the big aspects that I find funny in all of this is this assumption that it's going to be so personalized that everyone's diet will be slightly different. And this is way better than these broad dietary guidelines we recommend at the population. And yet one of the biggest studies to actually look at changes in, in people's diet, which is called the Food for Me trial, uh, was conducted a multi-site study across a couple of European countries. And when you look at the changes that were made as a result of this kind of personalized nutrition, which which was just again, you know, from from sitting down with nutritionists and actually, so so the actual algorithm based kind of personalized nutrition or the genotype and phenotype data didn't actually improve the recommendations above just good nutrition advice. But when you look at the changes. It was things like they reduced their red meat consumption, they reduced their sodium consumption, they consumed more fiber and more fruits and vegetables. Like, okay, so there are just our population guidelines. <laughs> so, so we're really being sold down a, a river, I think, on this in many ways. Um, and ultimately, you have to ask the question, like, who is this really serving? It's serving the worried well. It's serving people with money who have the ability to buy health, who are already the people who least need most of the the interventions that we do need. Obesity, uh, any of the chronic lifestyle diseases that we experience in the population at a high prevalence, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, these stratify along socioeconomic lines. Um, the idea that that this is an intervention that reaches uh, down to the people who need it most um, is fanciful thinking, if at best. And and there's just nothing really in terms of the the. If you look, for example, at at the 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 two, there was one study in Israel and one here. You know, the predict study. 
And again, they're they're largely based off glucose. They're looking at people's glucose responses and they're largely, and you'll see one or two examples in, in these papers of, oh, well, look, this was one person's response to a banana and this was another's and they're, they're completely different. And it's like, yeah, but, but that's again, scale that up to the whole population. And I would, I would almost bet based on regression to the mean that that would wash out and we just still see an effect. And in a, in a population like the UK, uh, as in, as in, as in, we wouldn't see ne like necessarily negative effects of a banana. And in a population in the UK where the average, you know, fruit and vegetable intake is, half of the target of the five a day the idea that we're now getting this message out there that maybe some people shouldn't be eating you know fruit because they might i just think it really puts the cart before the horse from a public health perspective and if you look at those studies they've largely like i said been based on measures of glucose response as a result all the algorithms really spit out is just advice for people to restrict carbohydrate intake we don't really have any good validation data that diet quality itself is improved. Um, and so I'm very skeptical of personalized nutrition. Um, the accelerated commercialization of it is way out over its skis relative to the evidence and the veracity of that evidence. Um, and and I, and I think that's probably why there's such a rush to commercialize it, uh, because the evidence really is not that uh overwhelming at all um and certainly from a public health perspective my big worry with a lot of this stuff this kind of health tech approach is that it's a very kind of it's a very neoliberal approach to it'll boil everything back to you know the health of the individual and the responsibility of the individual and actually all we need to do is take everyone in the population and you know get this algorithm to tell them what to do and and, and we'll leave it at that and as a result then personalized nutrition basically ignores all of the structural and commercial determinants of health um, as, as they currently are the biggest determinants of an individual's dietary intake, their diet quality, and their related, you know, kind of health risk over the longer term.